Listen to Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Oxford Reading University. Level 2, Part 3. You will find Part 1 here. You will find Part 2 here. 10. The next day, Elizabeth went on a walk and met Mr. Darcy. He gave her a letter and went away without saying a word. The letter read, Do not be afraid, madam. I am not going to ask you to marry me again. It was, however, necessary for me to write this letter. Please read it carefully. First, I would like to explain the situation with Mr. Bingley and your sister. I saw that his feelings were serious. I watched your sister. I did not believe she was in love with my friend. If I was mistaken, your anger is understandable. But there were other reasons against such a marriage. Your mother is an ill-mannered woman, so I talked Mr. Bingley out of it. As for Mr. Wickham, it is best if I tell you the whole story. Mr. Wickham is the son of a very honorable man, my father's servant. My father gave the young Mr. Wickham a good education. George Wickham was going to be a priest, but I long ago began to see his true character. My father died five years ago. He asked me to help Mr. Wickham. Half a year later, Mr. Wickham told me that he didn't want to be a priest, but wanted to study law. He hoped I could help him. I gave him money for his studies. However, he did not go to the university. Then he asked me for more money. I refused. After that, we stopped communicating. But then something very bad happened. My sister, who is ten years younger than me, finished school last year. In the summer, she went to the seaside, and so did Mr. Wickham. She was in love and agreed to run away with him. She was only fifteen. She told me the story herself. She couldn't keep any secret from me. You can imagine how I felt. Mr. Wickham was clearly interested in my sister's money, but he also wanted to make me suffer. This, madam, is the true story of me and Mr. Wickham. If you do not believe me, you can ask my cousin, Colonel Fitzwilliam. He knows everything. Truly yours, Fitzwilliam Darcy. Elizabeth had to read the letter many times before she could begin to understand it. She was shocked, but she had to believe it was true. I think you forgot to subscribe to our channel. Do it now to get more audiobooks like this. 11. Elizabeth comes back home. Her younger sisters talk about officers and parties all the time. Lydia is invited to spend summer by the seaside with her friends. Elizabeth doesn't want to see Wickham anymore. In July, Elizabeth goes on a trip with her aunt and uncle, the gardeners. One day, they find themselves not far from Mr. Darcy's house. They are curious because the house is very big and beautiful. They know that Darcy isn't there at the moment, so they decide to go see the house. They are met by Darcy's housekeeper. She says that Darcy has always been very kind to her. Elizabeth is surprised. She thought that Darcy was unpleasant with everyone. She also sees a portrait of Darcy with a warm smile on his face. 
Elizabeth never saw him smile that way. When they walked through the garden, Elizabeth turned back to look at the house. Suddenly, she saw Mr. Darcy. They were too close, and he definitely could see her. Their eyes met, and both of them went red. Darcy came up and spoke to Elizabeth politely. She introduced him to her aunt and uncle. Darcy started talking to them. Why is he so different? Elizabeth asked herself. He is so kind and polite now. Is it because of me? Is it impossible that he could still love me? Then Darcy turned to her. Tomorrow my sister is coming, he said. I would like her to meet you. Will you allow me to introduce my sister to you? Elizabeth was really pleased. It was a sign of respect. The next day, Darcy introduced his sister to Elizabeth and the gardeners. They could see that Darcy was in love with Elizabeth. Soon after that, Elizabeth received a letter from Jane. Dearest Lizzie, something terrible has happened. It is about poor Lydia. She has gone off to Scotland with Mr. Wickham. Imagine our surprise. They are still not married, and nobody can find them. Our mother is very ill. Jane. Elizabeth was shocked. At that moment, Darcy appeared. Elizabeth told him the news, and he was shocked too. She left quickly. She needed to be with her family. Do you like this video? Send it to your friends. 12. Elizabeth's father tries to find Lydia and Wickham in London, but doesn't succeed. He comes back home. Soon after that, they receive a letter from Mr. Gardiner. He writes that they were found and that Wickham married Lydia. Mr. Bennet thinks that the gardeners gave Wickham a lot of money. After that, Lydia and Wickham come to visit the Bennet family. Suddenly, Elizabeth learns that it was Mr. Darcy who found Wickham and made him marry Lydia. She realizes that her opinion of him has changed completely. Now she thinks that Darcy is a kind and honorable person. Several days later, the Bennet family learned exciting news. Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy came back. Jane didn't expect to see Mr. Bingley again, but soon he came to visit. He talked to Jane for a long time. When he left, Jane was extremely happy. Oh, my dear Lizzie, he asked me to marry him, she told her sister. And what did you say? Elizabeth asked with a smile. Of course I said yes, Jane replied. It was a cheerful evening in the Bennet house. Everyone celebrated and wished Jane happiness. Two days later, a rather strange thing happened. Lady Catherine de Bourg came to the Bennet house. She immediately asked for a private conversation with Elizabeth. When they were alone in the garden, Lady Catherine said, Yesterday I learned some unpleasant news. I was told that you are going to marry my nephew, Mr. Darcy. Of course, it cannot be true. It is impossible. But still, I decided I should come and tell you what I think about it. If you think it cannot be true, then why did you come so far? Elizabeth asked. Can you tell me that it really is not true? Has my nephew made you an offer of marriage or not? You have just said that it is impossible, Elizabeth replied. Lady Catherine became very angry. 
Miss Bennet, do you know who I am? She asked. You cannot talk to me like this. Let me make it clear. You cannot marry him. No, never. Mr. Darcy is engaged to my daughter. They have been promised to each other since their childhood. But it's Mr. Darcy's decision, not mine, Elizabeth said. And if he wishes to marry me instead of your daughter, why shouldn't I accept him? Because honor doesn't allow it. Also, it is in your interest to refuse him. If you marry Mr. Darcy, everyone connected to him will hate you, Lady Catherine said in a serious voice. That would be quite unpleasant, but I think I will get many benefits in return, Elizabeth told her with a smile. Lady Catherine became even angrier. What a rude girl, she cried. Listen to me. My daughter and Mr. Darcy are formed for each other. They have had the same education and the same lifestyle. And now a young woman without family, connections, or money is going to destroy it all. I will not allow it. Mr. Darcy is a gentleman. I am a gentleman's daughter. So far, we are equal, Elizabeth said. But what about your mother? What about your youngest sister? I know that she has run away with a man. My nephew can't be connected to such a family. Elizabeth stood up. I am not going to talk to you any longer, she said. You have offended me in every possible way. I think you should leave. What a selfish girl, Lady Catherine cried. Very well. Don't think you will ever marry my nephew. I will do everything I can to stop it. With these words, she got into her carriage and left. What a strange conversation, Elizabeth thought to herself. Can it be true? Does Mr. Darcy really wish to marry me? 13. The next day, Mr. Bingley came to visit as usual. However, this time he brought Mr. Darcy with him. Mr. Bingley and Jane sat down and started talking. Mr. Darcy asked Elizabeth if they could go for a walk. She happily agreed. She wanted to talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. When they left the house, Elizabeth told him, Mr. Darcy, I have long wanted to thank you for everything. You have done so much for my sister Lydia. So, from all my family, I thank you with all my heart. If you wish to thank me, he replied, let it be for yourself alone. I did it because I wanted to make you happy. Of course, I had other reasons as well, but the main reason was you. Elizabeth was so embarrassed that she couldn't say anything. After a moment, Mr. Darcy added, Please be honest with me. If your feelings haven't changed since last April, tell me so. My love for you is as strong as before. But one word from you will keep me silent forever. This was too good to be true. Elizabeth couldn't believe her ears. Finally, she managed to say, Actually, my feelings have changed completely. If I, if you, if you ask me the same question again, my answer will be different. Elizabeth couldn't lift her eyes and kept looking at the ground. 
So she didn't see Mr. Darcy smiling as happy as any man could ever be. Do you want more English audiobooks with translations and transcriptions? Check out app ewa.com. You can read books and learn new words every day. And now, enjoy another English story.